Hi, I'm Daniel Linder, a marriage family therapist, addiction specialist, and relationship trainer. And I also created the relationship model of addiction. So right now what I want to do is I want to share with you some tips and strategies for mastering the art of relating and intimacy. And I want to say that this came from, was inspired by my, uh, by Brendan Bruchard and my association with him. I have attended two experts academies and one of his partnership weekends uh, intensives and they were very inspiring to me and got me to do a lot of these th kinds of things I've been doing since, like this video. So I want to say that this is for, for people, this, the people who are going to find this the most useful are those who are really in touch with their need to love, like Brendan is and I am, and is in, you know, a lot of what they do comes from their need to love, or you're in touch with your uh, deep need for connections, uh, to make uh, intimate connections in relationships, and also it could be useful to you if you're, you are one of those people who really want to learn how to relate more effectively and get more connections when you're relating with people. So uh, I want to begin with uh, an understanding of what a relationship is and then I'm going to give you five tips and strategies. Understand what a relationship consists of. A relationship consists of two separate autonomous entities and these are two healthy full-fledged selves called me and you who build a bridge of connection called us that's how me and you become us it's through an exchange that's verbal and nonverbal and that exchange is communication so thus I want you I'm going to talk about five tips that you could be mindful of and the the idea is for you to be practicing whenever you're in a relating situation, whenever you're relating, okay? So those five tips. First one is everything you say matters. So, so a lot of people just kind of are on automatic when they're talking and don't realize that what they say and where they're coming from can lead to a greater level of connection, closeness, and understanding, or distance and um, disengagement. I want to say that where I'm coming from with this is kind of straight out of the uh, the archives of Buddhism, where what Buddhism is based on, you know, one of the one of the four noble truths, the last noble truth of Buddhism is about how to alleviate suffering and achieve enlightenment by following the eightfold path. One of the steps on the eightfold path is the right speech. So Buddhas, in Buddhism, it's implied that if you practice mindfully the right speech and be coming from compassion, kindness, whenever you're talking and being, being aware of that, you will, have, you will alleviate suffering, you won't be as stressed out or in pain as much, and life and relationships could become much more fulfilling. Everything you say matters, right speech. The second one, is, again, this is a practice. Whenever you're relating, say what you're aware of. Say, I, right now, I am aware of. The key words here is, I am aware of. Whatever it is you're thinking, feeling, wanting, whatever's, whatever your experience is in the moment. Because this is the key to representing yourself accurately and being heard, seen, understood and known. So when you're coming from your awareness, you're more, your experience is going to be more crystal clear. So say, what I'm aware of is this, when you're interacting. This leads to the third tip that I wanted to impart to you, and that is about comparing notes. Always be conscious of and in the spirit of comparing notes. So after you say what you're aware of, you want to find out what the other person's aware of, so that me and you become more clearly defined. Don't, that's pretty straightforward right there. So you're always in comparing notes. Now the thing about this that is really important and that could be really helpful to you, 
and you can probably relate to this, most people are either very self-centered or very other-centered. So when you're talking to a self-centered person, you might have the experience or get frustrated because it's, you might be thinking or saying to yourself, it's always all about them. It's all about them. They're always talking about them and not really putting much attention on you. And then there are also a lot of people who are not connected to themselves too much and put more of the attention on the other person. They're other-centered. And so what gets lost there is their own experience. So when you do, what, what you do when you're uh, comparing notes is creating a balance so that me and you come out more clearly and are more clearly defined. Very key to understanding each other. Always compare notes. So each one has a voice. Each of you get a voice and can be heard. The third, uh, the fourth note uh, or tip is about uh, being present, and that is that whenever you're saying and expressing something or hearing the other person coming at you uh, with what they're feeling and what their reaction is, always register in your mind that whatever is being said, whatever is being implied, whatever you're feeling and how you're receiving it is occurring right now. Add that this is happening right now. This is my experience right now. And what this does is that it kind of lightens up the communication and allows you to be in the moment without personalizing the communication, without feeling bad about it or have it um, uh, plug you in or um, trigger you back into past experiences or define yourself like I must not be good or I'm always this way and um, I can't do this in the future or else this person's going to respond and it kind of gets you out of the moment. So always just be thinking about whatever your experience is, is tied up with. It's, the context is in present time. It's happening right now. And the last tip and strategy for you to practice that will really transform your experience in relationships is always be looking for understanding. So what this means is when you understand someone, when you feel, when someone's speaking to you and sharing their experience with you, when you respond to them, just say what you heard, summarize their experience, just to make sure they know that you got what their experience is. And if you don't get them or understand them, you ask, well, what is that? I didn't quite get where you were coming from and run that by me again so you could really get them. Likewise, when you're sharing your experience, you want to make sure that the other person's understanding you. And if they don't go through this process of summarizing your experience, you could ask them, did you get where I was coming from? So you're looking for them to register your experience so you could feel heard, seen, understood, and known. So this is it, five tips. If you practice these tips, you will transform your experience in relationships. And until then, practice, practice, practice. The quality of your relationships is the quality of your life.